Hi, I'm David Penn, Research Analyst with Finnovate. Joining me today is Luvleen Sihu. She is the CEO and founder of BM Technologies. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Yes, you're fresh off the stage from a presentation that I was lucky enough to get to watch. It was very, very interesting stuff. And I think our uh, audience is going to find it very interesting to learn a little bit more about you and your company. Um, maybe to start off, you could tell us just a little bit about yourself and BM Technologies. Sure. Um, I'm Loveleen. Mm -hmm. I'm the founder and CEO of BM Technologies. Mm -hmm. We are one of the largest digital banking platforms in the country today. Mm -hmm. We have over 2 million uh, account holders with <laughs> us today. Um, and we are one of the first neo banking fintechs to go public, mm -hmm. uh, which we did earlier this year via mm -hmm. SPAC, which was definitely an exciting mm -hmm. moment for, for, for all of us. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and we're a banking as a service player, so we really allow non banks to be able to get into the banking business to better attract engage and retain their customers. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Now again, I did mention that I was able to catch some of the presentation. I hope some of you were able to catch it as well. Covered a lot of ground, but I was wondering if perhaps you could give us maybe a top two or three takeaways from uh, the conversation you had with Steve. Sure. Well, we talked a little bit about bold leadership mm -hmm. and the value of bold leadership and um, to start with just defining it. Like, mm. you know, I think that now more than ever with sort of, you know, the complexities of a global sort of integrated world with social media, with digital transformations taking place where companies changing business models accelerated by technology, you need more and more bold leaders. And what does that mean? Um, it's leaders that really bring big ideas that are able to bring compelling, unique you know, purpose and visions to the table and energize people to follow that. Um, so we talked a little bit about that and what it means, and especially in fintech, and how do you differentiate yourself in a, in a sort of in an industry where new players are coming every day and they're, they're VC backed and it seems like they have unlimited capital. Mm -hmm. And so being able to, to pivot and to be able to compete in a very saturated market competitively, and that's what we've been able to do through our B2B2C approach and our banking as a service approach in the neo banking space. Sure, I thought it might be worthwhile for folks who are just getting to know BM Technologies for the first time if Maybe you could maybe take a step back with us and talk to us a little bit about the origins of the company. Yeah, we started about six and a half years ago, and, and we actually started as a direct-to-consumer strategy, mm. like a Chime, like a Vero, like a number 26, mm. because what we were trying to build was being able to, to build a banking product that was more affordable, that was better than what existed in the market today, that really was focused on affordability, transparency, more consumer-friendly products, similar to the missions of some of these but we wanted to be, we knew from the start, we wanted to be sustainable mm. business model that was focused on profitability. Oh, okay. Uh, and so our early origins was direct to consumer. We opened up accounts, but we weren't hitting that pillar of getting to profitability. Mm. Uh, we're getting small balance accounts, we're getting some fraud, we're getting experimental accounts, etc. Mm. And so we made a bold sort of decision uh, about a year and a half into our, our business where we wanted to take a B2B2C approach. How can we use yeah. distribution partners and channels channels where they have entrenched customer bases already mm -hmm. and that they could leverage and use financial services uh, while using that brand and that logo to engage with them in a more loyal, sticky way. And so we're doing that today, most notably with our partnership with T-Mobile. Uh, yeah. We launched the T-Mobile Money Checking Account, which we're very proud. We just won earlier this afternoon the best fintech partnership yes. at Finnovate <laughs> between our company and T-Mobile. And yeah, very interesting stuff. So just listening to you talk and again, catching your presentation, the perspective that you have to have on this industry has really got to be pretty unique and incredible. Um, you mentioned the relationship being a, a, B2, a B2C early on. So I think about a lot of the companies right now that are on that voyage and how they some of the challenges that they're facing. I also think about yourself as a very young person starting out, as a woman starting out. I'm curious, as a woman in this particular field, in the finance services and fintech, could you maybe reflect on some of your experiences that you've had that you might think maybe would be helpful for folks like yourself who are also starting out, who might also be women who are looking to take on those leadership roles that you've talked about? Yeah, so I was telling the audience right now that I, I wasn't even trying, but just being me was like bold. So this is a very male-dominated industry. And I did start at a young age. I was about 27 years old when, mm. when I founded the company. Um, minority, and when we took the company public earlier this year, I was at the time the, the youngest founder and CEO, woman founder and CEO to take the company public. And so I would say use it to your advantage. Like to me, it was very consistent, my sort of bold 
style, which was just you know different from what the industry was used to, was very much in alignment with the bold, disruptive strategy of what we were trying to do within financial services. So I leveraged that difference as a value creation opportunity for us. And so, you know, if people are passionate, they're hardworking, they bring good ideas to the table, they're solving consumer pain points, that's what you should focus on. Mm. And, and I think the rest will speak for itself. Yeah, really interesting. Again, it's just, we don't have a lot of time, unfortunately. Um, but one of the things that really does strike me is that so many of the roads that so many of the people are trying to travel now are roads that you have already traveled. And I'm just thinking, as you look at the fintech market, you look at financial services, the way that it's been developing, you mentioned digital transformation, where do you see us going? What are some of the things that you look at right now and say, I want to keep an eye on that to see how that turns out over the next year, two to three years. Yeah. So I, I think there's a lot of movement happening. I think def definitely the use of blockchain and to mm. be able to do faster payments, more efficient, less costly, um, and, and then crypto and, yeah. and how, you know, it's crazy to me that in the last year, I think one in five Americans owns Bitcoin. You know, that was a revolution that happened pretty fast. Uh -huh. um, and so I think we're going to see more and more about enabling use cases with blockchain wow. and the use of just everyday Americans playing in crypto and being able to utilize that in more and more instances uh, in, in sort of their payment scheme. Hmm. Um, and I think that we're going to see more of a sort of rebundling where a lot of players start out with a niche market, whether that was SoFi and student loans or Robinhood and investing or deserve and credit cards, where they, they want to capture more and more of the pain points of the consumer that they're serving and mm -hmm. being able to offer a really a full service digital banking platform mm -hmm. that includes banking, lending, crypto advice, insurance, all under one umbrella. And I think we're going to be seeing more of that. Well, very interesting stuff. Well, again, we're running out of time, but I can't help but just ask you, we've talked about what we see for the future of fintech writ large, but what do we see for the future of BM Technologies? Yeah. Well, we're, as I said, we love to enable mm -hmm. uh, non-banks to be able to get into the banking business. So mm -hmm. I'm excited and we'll hopefully share another brand that we're working with yeah. beyond T-Mobile in the coming months and also expanding our technology. There are thousands of credit unions and community banks mm -hmm. in this country that are looking at ways to be able to accelerate their digital strategies mm -hmm. and outsource some of their costly operations and being mm -hmm. able to do it in a more streamlined way. And we will be getting into that business and helping more community banks around the country. Country. Fantastic. Well, it's good news for us to hear and good news for them yes. <laughs> as well. Absolutely. Thank you very much for sitting down for us a little bit of uh, time after your presentation. It was really interesting to get to know you a little bit. I hope you enjoyed talking and listening to her as well. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.